I can feel like 80 rats in my Marys. Me and Drizzy back to back is getting scary. If you fucking with my eyes, just don't come near me. Put some bins all on your head like Jason Terry. Let's get it, let's get it. You already know the Phase On View Podcast, Phase On View Podcast, episode 224, man. Business or personal, man. As you already know, my brother here, man, co-host Hugh in the building, Hugh in the sure. building. As you already know, we have a very special guest today, Ayana is here with us. So we about to have an amazing show. We're going to have some good topics and some good talks. As you already know, Game Shift, Color Power, Hey, nine believers, you got the buckets, nine, nine man. Believers, man. We have the hats right here, as you know, and the phase on view podcast merch. Hey, it's already out the mask, $15 each. And I got some more summer merch coming as well, as you already know. So on our agenda today, we have first and foremost, let's talk about Taraji P. Henson, man. DMV native, DC native for real. Launches program to help black students conquer mental struggles and racism at school. Very important. Next, we talk about Joe Button Podcast Breakup. I'm not sure if everybody heard, but I feel like it's a good conversation because it talks about mixing business with your friends. So that 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 goes a long way. And a lot of people had a lot of views on that. Next, would you hold it down if your partner went to jail? <laughs> Are you sticking beside them? We won't get into that. And my brother Hugh right here it has an amazing uh, topic and agenda right here. Record label crew errors. Man, we're going to talk about from 2009 to 2019, man. Who Who's holding the throne? And lastly, as always, would you rather? Would you rather forget who you are or who everyone else was? Mm -hmm. So I feel like it's a difficult question. That's, that's a pretty good one. That is a pretty good one. Because it goes hand in hand. All right, so first and foremost, man, DC stand up, man. It's Roger P. Henson. DMV 100. Man. I, I love it, man. I love it because she's talking about conquering mental struggles and, and racism in school, in which I feel like we should have in school systems already. I feel like we should have things in place for programs of people of different ethnicities coming into the school system and understanding their culture, understanding who they are as people. You know, we just got these generic textbooks. We got things going on in school that may may not be able to speak on because, you know, students may be shy or students might be scared to speak up on certain things. So what do y'all think is going on? What do you feel about this? What, this um, is an amazing thing. First. Um, I can, yeah. Um, so I watched her, like, uh, I guess her commercial that she had mm -hmm. uh, the other day, and I thought it was, like, really important because I know growing up, most of what I learned about, like, our history, I learned at home. I mean, you know, they teach, okay, Born slavery, church. civil rights movement, mm -hmm. and that's kind of it, but they don't talk about how, like, it wasn't that long ago. We are not that far removed from, you know, that, like. Absolutely. So, and I guess even how to encounter, like, racism, dealing with mental health with regard to that, they don't talk about that. Like, mm -hmm. uh, we don't have, I mean, we don't really have enough black teachers either oh. speaking on their experiences and things like that. So, I mean, I think it's good. I just, I think I, I need to read about it more to see, like, how she's trying to really, you know, how they're going to really put that in the curriculum. Because, I mean, when we think about it, we don't hear about other cultures or Absolutely. other races for real. I mean, learn about the Holocaust, mm -hmm. maybe some like Chinese dynasties, yep. but that's not all I remember for real, so. <clears throat> I think it was dope because, you know, um, a part of me, you know, it reminded me of something, you know, something that LL Cool J said when they were talking about hip hop. He said, man, when you grow up in the inner city, you feel like nobody sees you and it's just normal. He said, there's reefs on the corner, there's cameras on the corner, it's just like, you know, your best friend died, you see a dead body, it's just like, people, black folks don't under that kind of stress every day. Yeah. And it's just like, mm -hmm. for us, it's just like, you know, like in, in her quote, she talked about how when she was a, a special ed kid. And the only reason that these kids were special ed was because they came from, you know, traumatic homes. Mm -hmm. There was nothing wrong with the boys, they just came from the projects. Yeah. And they would grab her hand and say things like, look, you know, the bullet holes came through our wall and they just, they're laughing, giggling about it. And it's just like, that's not something that's supposed mm -hmm. to be yeah. funny. But, you know, because it happens so often in their neighborhood, they think, when you grow up in that, and they say, you think that's normal. Like, when you yeah. finally get outside of that, you're trying yeah. to figure out why there's no right. dead bodies on the street, why the police ain't right. going everywhere, mm -hmm. why everybody alive. Because mm -hmm. in, in your mind, you think it's normal for people to get shot up and mm -hmm. to be living broke. And so I think this initiative is great because, you know, you know, young boys and young girls who grow up in those environments need a place to talk about those things and understand that, hey, like, this isn't, this isn't right. normal. I want you to know that there's other things in life and, you know, 
you don't want what's going on to affect you mentally. And um, like you said, like I think there is there needs to be more talked about as far as like um, like art history. I know for sure next last year will be in the new history textbooks. Mm -hmm. That's a fact. So they're gonna have to mention oh, it yeah, one way or the other. I can't wait to talk to my kids about 2020. Tell them how I lived through that. Yeah. Yeah. But that was the time. <laughs> Man, I had two things with, with this. I, I really love the fact that at the end of the day, she she came from here. She came from DC. It's one of our own. And and also understanding that. You know, especially the mental struggles, but also racism in school. We yes. we're from this area. We're from PG. We are yeah. we have so much of a luxury because our brothers and sisters are in the school system with yeah. us. Yeah, exactly. understand that. We're, yeah, black we're, we're, uh, yeah. Yeah. we are if two. We have black principals, so we are ninety eight percent, almost all of African American in our schools. Mm -hmm. So with her doing this is monumental to everybody because she's not just speaking from her area as well. Yeah. She's speaking for everybody. And also another thing that I praise with her is just these things are taught. If you if you show other black people and black students, guess what? It's gonna trickle down to other people as well because you're teaching in these in the schools. Because at the end of the day, racism is taught. Racism and that's what and that's one thing it, it, we have to start bringing to the table and bringing to the forum that at the end of the day, it's not bad having friends of different ethnicities because you have to teach those friends that you have those things that matter and educate them. And I feel like it's very just important that that we talk about mental struggles in the black community because it's just, and it's beautiful now because over the last recent years it's been more profound to talk about be yeah. open and go to therapy and stuff like that. But just keep the, keep the ball on the road because at the end of the day, it's just like, and it's a lot of people out here damaged and hurt. I say all the time, Everybody on this earth has PTSD in some type of way, some form. of some format. You know, you've been through a traumatic experience, no matter what it's been. You bumping your head into a wall, anything. And just being black, man, and, and, and having social media nowadays, it's important for these teens and this youth to understand and know. Because they see social media, they see they see our people getting gunned down and killed. Mm -hmm. So imagine the trauma when they walking out the house and maybe not even noticing it or knowing it. So some of them already see stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Some of them already think. Some of them already see stuff like that and be like, "Well, right." Well, they think that's just they, right. Like, I saw that the other day. day. I saw that last week. Absolutely. <clears throat> so I feel like this is a, just an amazing thing that she's doing. And shout out to Taraji P. Like, yeah. Amy one hundred. Love it. Love it. So with them moving on, man. With them moving on, this is a very hot topic. We both <laughs> love this show, so this hurts us <laughs> very dearly. So I want to talk about it though. Me and me and him have been having a conversation with, along with our friends. Did you Joe watch the Joe Budden podcast? And I that's, saw like uh, one Chris. episode, like the one when um, it was a long time ago when Drake and Chris Brown but um dropped um. Oh yeah, no got it. Right, right. Not undecided. What was that? No got it. No yes. got it. Yeah. yeah and they dropped it. another song, not you too, but yeah. Those yeah. two. Those two are really friends. Right? So, they, they've been everywhere together. It's crazy how black men just link up. We're going to talk about the podcast breakup, man. We're going to yeah. talk about our thoughts about business and friends. So, we've been talking about this. I've been indulging Joe Bunn podcast for about four or five years now. And honestly, I want to give them their props too before we can get into this conversation. It's a lot of the reason why I really started my podcast. I wanted to start my podcast with just in general alone, but just having my friends and just having a conversation like we said pre-podcast, it's a barbershop, hair salon type of, type of conversation. You just chilling and relaxing, that's what they made. They made that really profound on, on YouTube, they made it profound to have visuals because podcasts, a lot of people didn't know podcasts were being visual. So they brought a lot of the form. So with that being said, they, this Joe Budden situation, they had a, they had a riffle, um, Joe, Joe, Ma, Rory, and um, of course Parks. But Joe, Joe, Rory, and Ma have been close for about four or five years now. I mean, in the podcast realm, they've been close and friends outside the podcast. And just over time, um, you just seen the ripple effect of really bumping heads within within the money, within the accounting. But it's more so just principle of the matter. It's more so principle. So a lot of Joe things and his opinions, it may be very narcissistic. A lot of people see his side because he's strictly talking about business mm -hmm. and what he has done in the platform. Yeah. But also on the other flip side of the things is, where well, I feel like Joe is wrong. He had a Spotify deal in which they talked about in which, you know, they understand he didn't build this by himself. Yeah. So it is your name, but you didn't build it by yeah, yourself. Yeah. So it, it adds a whole different criteria to it. And where Roy and Maul really just don't respect out of Joe is it's just because at the end of the day, if we built something together and we have a percentage-based contract, yeah. 
I deserve to see what is I in my contract, and I have to see. How and you can't be hypocritical because, like in the Spotify deal, he wanted to see certain things and he wanted to have yeah. um, certain leverages, but they were treating him poorly as an employee. But you're treating your friends poorly too. Mm -hmm. So I understand what the business what he was saying too, but I, I'm sticking with Roy Moore because at the end of the day, it's about principles, ethics. They they had a release. I don't know if you guys seen that. Roy yeah, Moore had a release and they rebuttal. talked about a rebuttal of what, what Joe was doing because it's a lot to compact in one. But mm -hmm. what they were basically saying is it's not about the money. It's about the principle of the matter and practicing what you preach and respecting. So what do you guys thoughts on this and business with friends? Okay, I'll go again. Yeah. Um, no, it's okay. Um, well, for me, being someone that doesn't watch the podcast, I did see like him, like, inspire them. Correct. And on YouTube. Right. And I thought, that's messed up. Right. Like, I mean, I feel like if you're going to air your business out, you don't have to do it on the podcast. Like, you could have just said, hey, right. they're not, they not coming back. It's our business, whatever. But, I mean, as out of respect for their friendship. Mm -hmm. But I feel like when you go in business with your friends, like, you gotta, y'all gotta be solid as friends and understand, like, Okay, we gotta keep the friendship and our business separate. You Correct. know what I'm saying? Like, I'm sure y'all, y'all have an understanding too. Correct. Of course. But I mean, but at the same time, this is like your friendship with yeah, your podcast at the same time. So, I, I mean, I can't speak too much on it, but I just feel like you just have to really understand who you're working with and understand, like, mm -hmm. you know, That's the my friend. Like, did. That's the thing. And it's I know. Like changed. And so, but I mean, then again, Joe Biden is right. Joe Biden. Exactly. So, I mean, I wasn't expecting it. I know people were saying, like, he's being, like you said, hypocritical about mm -hmm. it. I think it's messed up. I hope they all can, you know, right. do their that's own right. thing. Right. I mean, I don't think they'll ever work together again no, at this point. But, so. And that's the same part. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so, what I'll say is, other than this podcast, the Joe Buddy podcast <laughs> was the greatest podcast ever. I mean, I spent countless and countless hours just, just laughing. I would be at my old job. And they were always looking at me crazy because I have my headphones in and I'm eating and I'm just laughing hysterically. But no one can hear what I'm laughing at. But I'm just, I'm, I'm watching the podcast and it's just, it was such an amazing time and a great era um, to watch. So to see it end is always, it sucks. Um, as far as him firing them on, on, on air, that was messed up. And I think what makes it messed up is because I know what you're saying that um, he probably shouldn't have done that and just kept it to himself. The reason I feel like he didn't, and why it's messed up, my fault, is that uh, you know, they speak about transparency all the time on the show. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. he wanted to be transparent. But I'm like, but I'm like, fam, like you can't you can't be not hypocritical about transparency, but to be hypocritical about the you no know, the not showing of the deal. Like you can't mm -hmm. that so that 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 blew me in. It's just like you have a percentage based contract. This was important for me to learn because as somebody who has a situation where I'm gonna have percentage based contracts, people need to see how much something is being made so they know mm -hmm. how much they need to get back. Mm -hmm. No one is calling Joe a thief. It's like, hey, the accounting people messed up. We just want to, you know, make sure we're doing all right. And he's bugging out every time. That's all. Man, you come up. It was four hundred thousand. You come up four hundred thousand dollars short, bro. But nobody was right. saying. But nobody was <laughs> like, I don't care what you talking about. They weren't yeah. saying that. Friends he was like, not, you want to come see about me? That's too much. <laughs> it wasn't even about like, yo, like. But they gave him the benefit of the doubt because that's Joe. Like that's yeah. their man. Like that's their man for like for over ten years. Wow. They gave him the benefit of the doubt, but at the same time, it's like, yo, like. You can't keep bugging out every time we want to see the numbers so that we can get paid. Yeah. And then it's just the way he was painting them out to be. Like, you know, it was one thing I don't stand for. Like, yo, don't don't play with my character, man. Because that's that's who I am. It's my integrity, and it affects other things. Don't don't you don't want to ever play with my character. So, Rory took offense to him calling him measly mm -hmm. and trying to say that they didn't bring any value to the job. Like, there are people going crazy and at the tours just for Rory and Maul as exactly, much as they are. Yeah, was say and then yes. him making Maul to seem like he was just some dude that yeah. needed his help and, and yeah, moving with him. And like, let me speak to that point. The Maul, the Maul situation blows me more than anything because Joe and Maul have a 15 plus year relationship. Exactly. Like I'm talking about like almost like real, real long of relationship. They, together, together. Like, they, they have a lot of, you know, ups and downs turning, but they have real true friends. What he said to Maul was disrespectful. He was just saying, "See, this yeah, this, is, this, is, none of your, this is none of your business." But it's it's messed up because <laughs> Maul bought a lot, of, yeah, lot, a, a lot of his energy and swag to the to the show, in which like they went on tour. Yeah. Like at the end of the day, what Maul was saying about when he his rebuddy was like, "The line wasn't wrapped around for you as a as a, a rapper, right. even if even if you were good lyrically and things that look at the optics, yeah, they wasn't worried about you as a rapper." 
This podcast brought happiness to a lot of people's yeah. homes, a lot of people's depression, a lot of people's uh, times in this pandemic. Mm -hmm. Like at the end of the day, this, this podcast was healthy for all of us and to see everyday life. Really just- And they just got, they, you know what's crazy? They just finally, it seemed like they just they got it together. And they just got yeah. it. They did everything. two pods and then it's like, you wake up one morning and it's all- they got yeah. and, and then they have, and then it makes it more complicated because then they just shifted over to Patreon. Patreon is like another um, oh, yeah. so basically another yeah. subscription based app you, where you can monetize. Mm -hmm. They switched over there and they had a big deal now. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you divvy that up? Because you were coming in a situation where it was all of these people. Mm -hmm. He and where and where a lot of his gripe comes from. Even though I like the synergy that they have, but it still wouldn't be the same as the I, Ice and Itch. Those are two Joe's other friends he was trying to bring to the podcast okay. in replacement for them. Oh. So he it's wasn't like trying to replace not. Them. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> listen, th listen, there were, because it's like part six. I like, like Joe. I it's like, like part six. There were other people involved in the pod whose main source of income was the pod. And if we stop and take a break for however long to fix that, then there are people who also can't eat. We understand that that's true too, but also at the end of the day, that's a conversation, bro. That's a conversation in which yeah. in which I need to have because one thing I will say, I was oh, on yeah. Joe's I was on Joe's side. Me and you was on Joe's side for a minute until the real truth came yeah, out. Until, truth until you see the optics and everybody has a side of the story. So that's what you get to see in this situation because on the outside we was like, okay, business months go on. Yeah. Because they went on a hiatus, that's what we thought. But it wasn't painted that way. Yeah. At the end of I the didn't day, like I, I knew some things still hadn't been fixed when Joe said, um, I don't owe my friends respect. It was yeah, like, that was whoa, the, yeah. Like, Mom was like, then, yeah. who do you, then who do you owe respect? Right. You don't owe your yeah. friends respect. Because he said, who you do don't. you owe? He's like, why well, owe a stranger on the street respect? Like, no, you don't. Like, yeah, you should respect a stranger on the street. You don't owe everybody. You owe everybody respect. You owe your friends respect. You owe everybody respect. And it's like, know. yeah, man, he was, it was the certain things he was just saying about the guys, I can understand why they felt the way. You know, Mars said, oh, I ain't never seen this dude wear a mirror had a day in my life. Now he's wearing funny right. hats. Yeah. He, <laughs> told, he told me this podcast none of my business. Like, who did you, he, then he said, yo, if they try to start turning the podcast, I'm gonna sue the pants off them. It's like, yeah, who did you just turn into? Right. Like, yeah. it's crazy. Like, I've never, I don't, I mean, I've never experienced that. I hope when I become successful, I don't have to experience yeah. watching my friend it's literally be change before my eyes. Yeah. The last thing I say is like, everything, Cause I don't want, cause I have, I saw people online saying, "Oh, academics and Solomon was right." I'm like, "Fam, it took seven years and a lot of a lot of success yeah. for it to be right. Everything ends eventually. I'm not giving you flowers because you were right eventually right. after right. almost ten That's years. Right. Yeah, like everything ends eventually. My thing is like, no one stays at the top forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's the way you gotta come down. But it's the way you come down. You don't have to crash and burn. You don't have to fall on your face. You can come down gracefully, or you could just. Take a slow decline. You know, a lot of things have crashed and burn. Rockefeller crashed and burn. Death Row crashed and burn. Freaking. But like what? Well, this I, is this looks like a crash and burn. The thing with Ayana said like that, that. that what Ayana said that really just is the whole thing. You don't. Everything is not for this camp. That's true. Everything is not social for media. social media. Yeah. Yeah. That, to what she said, because at the end of the day, we wouldn't even know all of this mm -hmm. if y'all would kept that in, in you know in, in the, the tub. group. And then you moved on from it. You <laughs> yeah. just let people speculate, yeah. but now you get to see so many celebrities respond. I know you see it. It's yeah. so a lot of people responding in which you would have never cared about. Like, you know, so it was just like okay. But to finish my point, my thing is like whatever you're doing, man. When you you finally when you finally get to that point, you have to talk to your team or whoever about about when it's about you know coming off the mountain because everybody has to come off the mountain one day. Yeah. But it's about how you come down. Right. So you want to have a conversation about hey, we don't want to crash and burn. If anything, we want to step down on our own, like off, like like Floyd Mayweather and Mike just retire, right. or you just you know somebody's better, you just gradually come down. But right. you don't want to crash and burn. But you still talk about hey, when this does end, eventually we can't stay up here forever. Yeah. But you, we should you should have conversations like that because I think a lot of people, you know, you get to the top and then because you're at the top, you let things just do whatever because mm -hmm. you're there. But not realizing there's nowhere else to go but down. Mm -hmm. You gotta talk Absolutely. about what happens when it's all, you know, mm -hmm. finally finished. I feel like he messed up his money. Oh, yep. And it sucks because yep. they, Joe has a history of that, unfortunately. And it's like yeah. Joe was finally in a space where it was like, hey, you know, he's doing well. And I think he'll bounce back, you know. Yeah, I, think, I, I think right now he has to go through this. Him. Yeah, yeah that, 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 that adds a, a lot of. Yeah, right now he's just gotta go through another season of just, you know. You know, it is what it is. But we shall see with that situation, man. But praise to all of everybody. Praise to everybody. Praise to everybody. You know, yeah. you know yeah. that Joe Budden podcast. Man. Shout out to y'all. Amazing years. We just hope to let everybody successful in that. But moving on, would you hold it down 
if your partner went to jail, are you sticking beside them? And I know we gotta add criteria to it, but I do want a yes or no answer. You can't, that's not, you can't do that. Are you sticking beside? You can't just do yes or no. If the circumstances okay. are, are, are important. It does, it does, it depends a lot, a lot. Yeah, what about so wait, okay, I wake so up one night and you're a what you what's, the, what's, the, what's, the, what's the criteria? All right, so we I need, to, I, need, I need to know Exactly. Like I need what to you know did. what you did. <laughs> I need to know why you did it. Yeah. I, need, I can't marry you and wake up and find out that you're a drug kingpin right. out of nowhere. That's right. Like no, fam. That's like true. no, we can't. You got a lot no. of people hiding. Yeah, faking the fun. Yeah, and you can't. I don't support stupidity. Like if I know if you're a friend of mine and you have a great paying job and I find out you robbed a bank, I'm not visiting you in jail. Mm-hmm. That was dumb. I'm not going to go visit you. I'm sorry. <laughs> like I don't support stupidity. So like if me and you were fine. And we're doing great financially, and you want to do something stupid and going to jail. I'm not supporting that. All right, so let me put a situation in front of you. So Yandy and Mandisis, this is what I got oh, yeah, mostly that. from. Oh. So yeah. Yandy brought her up to Mandisis and just was telling her, you know, telling him, you know, I held it down. I, I stuck it out for you. You know, all these things that we're going through, we can get through it. Look what I did. I'm strong at the end of the day. She's a strong black woman. Nothing like a black woman. And she told him straight to his face. And when he turned her back, he was like, I don't know if I would be able to do Man, that. He should have said yes, yes, nothing but yes. But in that situation, like, you have kids, you have foundation, mm-hmm. but also too, to Yandy's credit, it's not easy. Exactly. You know, people don't understand that's not easy to go. And I applaud Yandy because it's not like she did. She, they, unlike in other scenarios, she knew Mendici, she knew of his past and mm-hmm. things like that. And that's what he got arrested for. It was something he did way back when they got him. It wasn't like he was out there running the streets doing something at that moment in time. It was something that happened to him All right. a couple right. years before they got him jammed up. But, so, to, but to your point, just like you were just saying, you don't want anything to just pop up. That popped up on her and she was still loyal and real. No, that's not what I meant. I meant like, I don't want you doing like, but I'm saying, doing but I'm saying, crime, but I'm saying, up, ain't like but I'm saying, but I'm saying she still stuck. Yeah, she stuck it out. Knowing, knowingly what it was and what the situation was going on. She still stuck it out. You so, so I don't know. Depends. I don't know if I'm. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. If in that situation, but for him, for him, it's different. But if his wife held it down. He needed to hold it down. So what, but, what do you think? I mean, at least with them, I kind of like watched Love and Hip Hop, and I know their relationship was shaky. Ooh, okay, <laughs> I knew their relationship was kind of shaky anyway. But like, it was just to me. I mean, well, my boyfriend now, I would, I would hold him down. But it also depends on what he did. Like you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, did you accidentally hit somebody with your car? Right. Yeah. And they accidentally died. Right. Maybe. I mean, because you could get out of that. You could find a way. I don't know. Like, for real. Like, but this I mean, is if fun. you this did it on purpose. This is one of the questions 50 asked. <laughs> no, for real, but if you did it on purpose, mm-hmm. I mean, like, okay, well, if you, why? If you you know, what was your motivation? <laughs> right. You know, did somebody do something to you or, like, your right. sister, your mother or something like that? But... I mean, Lava Bank again. That's dumb. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I can't think of any other. Like, what's like what's something that would y'all y'all would consider unforgivable? Why wouldn't you open like that? Unforgivable. Um, if you, <laughs> something if you don't if we don't talk yeah, go if we don't talk about it first. Yeah. If you just like if you just out here committing fraud. If you just out here committing fraud. That's stupid. That's dumb. That's, that's straight up stupid. And like there are scenarios where like people try to throw their partner under the butt, like they'll forge your signature and all that type okay, of stuff. Like you trying to get that. So that you trying to throw me in jail, heck yeah. I'm not yeah. like you, you kiss this whole thing goodbye. Um so that's like a, that's probably a reason I wouldn't hold it down. But there are scenarios where like even though more likely a man would probably do this, there are scenarios where like you know, you just don't know where your next meal is coming from and you got kids and sometimes men get yeah. in their mind to go do whatever they got to do mm-hmm. at that moment in time. You know, if my if my woman did happen to do that, then I would hold her down because I know she was just trying to do what she had to do for her. Yeah, yeah, she wasn't just yeah, wasn't yeah, looking out for her. her. Yeah, uh, that's, that's another thing. You just out here stealing well, designer, right? <laughs> Heck no. Right. <laughs> like yeah. what? Yeah. You been, Let them designer yeah. bags visit you in jail. Yeah, you being stupid and if you bet, if, yeah, boy, it got to be a little it better be a per- better be a good reason. <laughs> yeah, it's gotta be a good reason. <laughs> yeah. Like, but then DC's, I mean, I, I, who am I to, you know, judge? It's and I get, yeah, I get what yeah. he was trying to say, but at the same time, I, I don't even know what you, if you knew what he got locked up for. I ain't, I'm not on here. It's past, I'm a, we passed that, but look. Yeah, like, I'm saying for him, he, he should have been like, yeah. But, yeah. Especially if you're on camera. Man. For sure. But I get it. But a lot of people don't think like that. Yeah. That's just the, the honest opinion. A lot of people wouldn't just hold it down, just being honest. He was in jail, what, five, 
Yeah, but that's a long time. Like, that's what I'm saying, though. She held it down. You know what I'm saying? She held it down. Like, yeah. And had multiple children. You, you gotta, gotta, yeah, you gotta hold it down when you're it down. But then, I mean, is it like a, is it a gender thing then? I don't Maybe. think it's a no. It's a partner. It's a, it's I don't think it's, I don't think it's a gender thing. Jail I, is jail, <laughs> for sure. And now, and if somebody, who, sure. and if somebody who has been there for a friend who's been in jail, I will say it's not easy. And we weren't even in a relationship, and it, it, it wasn't yeah, easy. Sure. We were just friends. Yeah. So I can only imagine being I mean, married lost. and it's having time kids. Lost time time lost. Yeah, and having kids to deal with by yourself. I can only yeah. imagine. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. There's got to be a solid reason. Nigga, no, it gotta be. It might have been tough. <laughs> well, I tell you, man, moving on, record label crew eras, man. This is an amazing topic. Boy, Hugh had, so I feel like this is very good. From 2009 to 2019. So, first, he said YMB. I mean, well, YM, Young Money. Young Money, Music, 2010. Mm-hmm. MMG, 2011. 2013 and 18, TDE. And lastly, 2019 Dreamville. Back. So those are the people who I feel like were the most dominant labels of those years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and you can just just check your record books of what came out that year from who, what camp, who did what. So we talk, we talk so about this. We're gonna talk about. Let's go down the line real quick. Let's go down the line real quick. Young well, Y M Y M they really kicked in the door. I mean Drake dropped so far gone and, and changed you know the game forever with that oh, mixtape. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Freaking uh, Nikki dropped Beam Me Up Scotty, which is now on Twitter mm-hmm. platforms. Yeah. She, I mean, she really love to see it. Nikki was, I feel like, I feel like, I know I know Drake is that dude, he's my guy, but I feel like just for that year, I felt like Nikki coming out was more important. I know Drake, Drake changed the game, but I'm saying Nikki was more important only because, no, yeah, listen, no, kind of came the game listen, with. no, but listen, listen to what I'm saying. At that point in time, female rap was all but dead. It was all but okay. dead, and okay. then here That's comes true. Nicki Minaj. All right. That's what I'm saying. All right. You know, we already had plenty of right. guys who were doing but great. Was I, 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 I heard he I, was, but I there know. was no female presence in rap. Okay, there was I, none. No, we. I agree with that. I'm yeah. not saying no. I'm not agree with that, but you ain't gonna just say what you just said. No, I just said Drake good. changed the like game. The best, the best I ever had didn't come out. Drake that changed. Same year. Drake changed the game with that mixtape. I'm only saying Nicki. Right, right. Throw it back. Fam, you remember? Yeah. Nikki, you remember Nikki took but over our high school. She's on the 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 she's what did Wayne talk about 09? You said what did, what did Wayne talk about 09? Oh, yeah, he didn't have to because Al 3 just yeah. came out. Oh, wait. He dropped Three Worth album. That wasn't a good idea. What? The Prom Queen? Are you kidding me? That was the only good song. No, that wasn't a good follow up. We're not going there. Right. No, we're not going there. Because my whole point, the premise of what you're saying, Nikki was out. Yeah. Drake, Drake, yeah, but my thing is what I was saying about Drake and why their young money was so prevalent and so good, Drake had another aspect. And like to your point, Nikki was one on one. So. Yeah. Her being one on one and and with her style was already coming in. Drake made it a little bit different because he just came from Degrassi, bro. We yeah. just seen a rapper. Hold up, we just seen yeah. a rapper who never who was never about street and never da 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 become one of the biggest rappers ever. Well, Kanye yeah. was so yeah. that was different, so, different, but different times, different times. I can't win with this guy. You saw the episode when I was I, against I, Nicki. I, he I was did. all for Nicki. Now I'm for Nicki. He, I can't win with this no. guy. I don't know what to do. What you were saying is <laughs> blasphemy, you. I don't know what to do. She actually agreed with me that time last week. No, because I because I, when we was talking about Rihanna and Nicki, I said Rihanna is the bigger artist, but the better to me, to your point, she's the best female rapper. She's but the you best female rapper. Rihanna's not. Rihanna's not two different. Two different. What you mean? And, and Nicki is. Catch- I'm not Nicki saying earned the respect of being called a rapper at own this point. Category, yeah. I think at this point, Nicki's earned the respect of being called a rapper. Yes. I feel like she, she wants to be lumped in with the guy. No, I, she is I a can't rapper, say they're so. comparable necessarily. Like, I mean, they both have projects that are better than one another. Correct. Let's move on. So I'm not <laughs> saying that Drake wasn't. I'm not saying Drake wasn't great. I was just yeah. saying Nicki finally brought some female rap presence in the, in the time where it was. It was yeah, it was nothing there. She took over my high school like a plague. Everyone had pink wigs. Everyone. 
kept screaming any bitch you think of. It was crazy. Correct. I hated her because she was so great. What you gotta stop doing way. when you in the mid conversation is comparing it to somebody. That's why I'm going to debate. I'm sorry. So in 2009, they also dropped the Young Money album, which I don't remember all of it being good, but they had a lot of hit records. They had the Bear Rock joint, which was crazy. They had Every Girl in the World, which was crazy. They had Roger Dad. Shout out to Tiger. Tiger was doing his thing. Tiger brought snapbacks back. So Young Money was definitely, it was their year 2009. 2010 was good music 100 mm -hmm. they went bonkers that was when you first yeah. heard of big sean mm -hmm. pusha t finally came back on the solo artist kid cuddy came through yep. they had common sure. they went to hawaii they was in the studio in hawaii and they made one of the greatest mixes i ever heard yeah. they made the good friday mixtape the they was going friday. nuts christian dior denim flow was the greatest unreleased song i've ever heard in my yeah, life i'm not debating really that too. i'm not debating that with anybody yeah. fam like they was going and then and then on top of that they did the good music cypher they had the black suit mm -hmm. they was all matching mm -hmm. and then kanye dropped dark twist of fantasy yeah, they, yeah 2010 yeah, they, they, they was going they was going crazy i don't know what they was on but they was on something nah, y'all want to speak on 2010 nah, nah, yeah. Kanye, well, Kanye is Kanye's a go-to, so we, I don't really have to, hey, Kanye speaks for itself because without Kanye, you don't get, not saying all of those people, but you don't get all those people in combined, yeah, in collaboration. Yeah. That's one thing people got to give Kanye yeah. his, uh, his uh, props to. He he, coll he collabs and he makes a lot of beautiful music, bro. Yeah. I know you're a big Kanye Twisted fan, Dark so Fantasy, yeah. like, he's different. Yeah. Is there anything you want to say? I know you're a I big mean, Kanye I mean, there's nothing to debate. I right. mean, they, they really had it. it. Yeah, they yeah. Was, so, I don't know what they was on, but they was in Hawaii, but they was going crazy. But yeah, then you then after that you got MMG. Hey, those are those are my boys. MMG, those are my boys. Those are my boys. Those are my boys. Those are my boys. While they finally came back after like a two year hiatus, he was only yeah. doing mixtapes. Yeah, while they finally okay. popped back out, while they, he popped back out, bro. No, like he, he was, he popped back out. It was like, oh snap! Popped back out, one day, bro. No, but I'm saying, like, look, he dropped, he dropped attention deficit, and he got dropped from the label because they undershipped oh, his album, correct, correct? And then it was like, yeah, you didn't really hear yeah, from him right. because he was just dropping tapes, right. and then he got re-signed, right. and then it's like, oh snap! Like, there's Wale with Ross mm -hmm. and me, mm -hmm. and it's like that was her first time seeing me. Mill, no, Mill drop. For me, you, me, 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 I'm about to just say, I was literally about to say, bro, when we was in high yeah, school, playing football, Jason, locker room, what? The Self Made Jason. album is one of my favorite albums ever. I mean, they was just, they was going crazy that year. And they, they all, they all three of them dropped some amazing bodies of work that year. Drake, I mean, no, Meek dropped, Dream Chasers won. I think he also dropped the album that year too. Probably the greatest intro of all time. Mm -hmm. I think it's, I think it's fair to call sure. that the greatest For intro sure. ever. For sure. Um, while they dropped the tape that year and they had a classic album with Ambition, you know, Ross dropped. That was 2011, That was 2011. Yeah. 11 one eleven. that was the name of the, um, the uh, mixtape, 11 one eleven, because that was the day the album's coming out. Mm -hmm. And then, you no know, Ross dropped um, God Forgives and I Don't, mm -hmm. an amazing album. They dropped the self made album that year. That was a great, that was a great year. That was 10 years before. Yeah, <laughs> they was going nuts. Like, whoa. Yeah. Whew. This is your crew too. TDE, man. Yeah, 2013 to 2018. I had to give them the last five years because it's, it's the way that it's the way they do it. They 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 take each year and focus on a certain artist. Mm -hmm. So it's like versus other crews, kind of just they put all their people out at one time. TDE will take a year for each person. So 2013 was when you know Kendrick popped out with yep. Good Kid, Mad City. Oh, yeah. And it's I mean, like everyone classics. else had tapes out classics. already. Like Schoolboy yep. Q School was that Habits and Contradictions. Habits and Contradictions. Mm -hmm. um, Absol. 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 Oh, yeah. So the Black, black Hippie was doing it. Oh, my God. Black Hippie was doing it. Black Hippie was doing it. So, yeah, but like, so from yeah. there, then every year it was like, because Q, Q had a Grammy nominated album. Freaking mm -hmm. J Rock put a project out of J Rock. Yeah, Scissor. Scissor. Oh, we got it. Oh, it's like 16. Don't even give me stuff. And then in 2018, 2016 was when Scissor came out and Kendrick came out. 2017. That was 2017. That was 2017. All right, so 2015 was Kendrick again. And Q. Oh, yeah, with Cuban Butterfly. Yeah, and Q. Cuban Butterfly. And then 2016 was Damn. No, nah, that was 2017. That was 2017. 2016 was Control. Control. No, Control was 2017. No, they both came out same year. Like the summer. For sure. Okay, that's yeah. crazy still. Because Bryson Tiller put an album out that summer too. Mm -hmm. uh, you remember yeah. that was the soundtrack the year after that? 2018 was the Black Panther mm -hmm. soundtrack, which was arguably oh, the best yeah. album of the year. They was going, 
Yeah, and they and they gearing up to, to smack smack people in the head again this year. Scissors already I mean, dropped two songs. New artists too. I mean, no, Sir's not new. Sir is great. I mean, reason, still, reason is really dope. They still have like other people like kind of dropping stuff in between. So. Isaiah Rashad is back. Isaiah I've Rashad never listened to his music, but I, I, heard, I do but, know people love Isaiah Rashad. Yeah. People have been waiting for him yeah, to come back. For so he gives me that kind of currency Freddie Gibbs type of. I'm a yeah. I'm a tap man. I've never like I'm I'm lazy when it comes to stuff. Like it took me to probably not like to hurt you. First two albums. I saw him live for. Or, um, Sylvia Demo. It was like he just dropped it, and oh, he just sad. dropped Oxymoron. So it was like oh, I had yeah. never listened to yes. him before. So I was like, Whoa, Good, this guy pure is music. Crazy. I have to because everyone for the last um, two years, right? everyone has been asking for him to come back. I was, and for some reason, I was just too lazy. But like you know, clearly this guy has a fan base. Yeah, I think that was so like clearly his music is good. And then he dropped. Um, was it what was that last joint in like twenty? Yeah, I got it. Like, I got it. Like, 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 but he's dropped this year. They already said we about to get all three of the big three this year. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. They already said K Dot about to pop back out this year. We already, and already know. We got code. They got hey, look, K Dot Drake, y'all better come. K Dot is coming this year. I already know y'all. I already know that Drake and K Dot gonna go crazy. Yeah, it's going. It's going to be. It's going to be insane when K Dot come back. My boy I, and Scissor, Scissor just dropped like two like hit records late yeah, late, late last year. Yes. So you know she about to come back out. So TDE about to smack people upside the head again. She, she going to play in the first week. Yeah. And then 2019, I got to give it to Dreamville. Dreamville, that was the year. If you've really been a fan of Dreamville, they've been giving up these tapes for mm -hmm. J.I.V. Yeah, the first one was the, the first one was the, um, was a tape you had to download. The second mm -hmm. one is on streaming services. Yeah. This one was something that you, like, to have a million rappers come in one location and just make the biggest compilation yeah. tape ever. Amazing. I mean, Cole put a lot of people in positions to get their records heard, to get Grammy noms and stuff like that. That was really truly their year. And they've had artists buzzing for a long time. Like, Boss is one of my favorite yeah, guys. My He's favorite easily too. the number two. Cole said it already. He's the number two on Dream Bill. Boss is yeah. really yeah. putting nothing but great albums out since 2014. Yeah. Him and Cole have been the best Rap, one of the best rap duos in the last couple years. They don't miss. Mm -hmm. They really go crazy. Too High to Ride is one of my favorite albums For ever. Sure. If you ever heard it, go play it. What's it called? Too High to Ride. That's, that's Boss's second album. Boss. Mm -hmm. His first one is called Last Winter and his third one is called Milky Way. And J.I.D. one of my favorite. J.I.D. He goes crazy. Right, nah, he I didn't like him at first because he sounded like, like Kendrick too much mm -hmm. to me. But he, 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 can rap his, he can rap his, uh, his ass on. He really he can. can. But they, they got Ari Lennox. Ari Lennox. Ari Lennox. Don't give me stuff. A really great soulful vibe. They got Cos. They got Omen, Lou. They got a lot of great, uh, a lot of dope. Earth Gang. Earth they got Gang. a lot of dope artists. Twenty nineteen was already there. Already coming yeah. soon. Yeah, yeah. already, yeah, already got to pop back out <laughs> from the city. You know, shout out our people. Facts and yeah, like the dream of twenty nineteen was easily their year. I mean, yeah. that was they got the cover. I forgot what magazine it was. They got the cover that year. Yeah, they, they did. They was all over the place. Just yeah, nomination just, too. Yeah, just with just with the rap camp alone, they was. Super airways. Everybody wanted to be a part of that. I mean, if you your favorite rapper was at the rap camp, just to, just to soak up the vibe. There's probably yeah. three more albums yeah. of music just coming from that session alone. Of no, so many no. rappers being in one spot. So off season. Thank God, Corona is off season. What you think about off season? Did you hear it yet, Joe? Did he hear the new code? Man, the no, new like, code. I haven't different. really listened to him since. Um, what was that joint dropped? Twenty fourteen. Before it's in. Oh, oh, no, four, 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 with really the aspect of the song, I understand his point because that's yeah, maybe yeah, why yeah, I feel like that's maybe why because it doesn't it doesn't bring an element if you hear him constantly. Yeah, and then you have to have a certain ear for yeah. Cole. Like, so, I like, it's a lot I like, of perspective. Like, I like live band type right. groups. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm trying to expand my um, listening. I'm like, but yeah, now, I, I like the all season. I put it. I mean, I it's too it's too early season. to say, but I have it right above. Uh, not right above for your eyes. I don't have. I don't think I have to put it above KOD. Yeah, it's it's too early to say KOD's been around for a long time. But I'm still playing that album. Me too. But it's a it's, it's a great it's a great album. You know, lyrically, you know, Cole gonna do what he do. Yeah. You know, he already he already gave us the bars before he, he dropped features. The album. Yeah, he gave us features. Oh, and bosses all over that. Album. Bosses on that. I wish he rapped, but you know, I'll take it. Um, you know, shout out to Mo Ray. Mo Ray's from North Carolina, yeah. so for him to get that opportunity to sing that hook was amazing. Made for him. That was amazing. Um, him and Twenty One, they love him. Twenty One do great on those type of beats. Slide. They slide. I was happy to see different producers on the joint because mm -hmm. they gave like a whole different sound. I do think there were some parts where it's like this kind of sounds similar, mm -hmm. but I I like the album. Like I, I only like Cole is so good. I only compare his work when she it comes out to his, his uh, to his other work. Correct. You know, and then when more albums drop this year, I can compare it to other stuff. But for for me, I always try to figure out 
how does it compare to the last joint or yeah. this joint or his first joint? Mm -hmm. But mixtape Cole is incredible. Cole has a lot of tapes. The Any Given Sunday tapes, the warm up. I um, feel like he's gonna. Life. I feel like he's gonna go down top ten. I, I do feel like. You think he'll be top ten? Rapping the Billy Wise, I, I do feel like he'll be top ten. Rapping the Billy Wise, that's the that's for show. Sure. It's strong to say because you got so many. You got so many, but honestly, when you talk about rappers, that's what people forget. You talk about overall impact yeah. and what he did. You got to think about J Cole. J Cole, kind of. I wouldn't say it like that, but. At the beginning of his career, yes, because he did have like, a lot of influences. I'm not saying it that way, but for a long time, he carried a lot on his back. He did a lot by himself with production, within getting yeah. in the studio, within within isolating himself, not being in the media, mm -hmm. and making good music. He did it a different way than a lot of people have done it. And his influence and impact is out of this world. Even though a lot of people still may not, you know, be listening to him. J. Cole will sell out anywhere he goes. Yeah. This so man put out an interlude. And it's the, he's, yes, and he's he put out an interlude and it's the, the, the most played song of the week. Yeah, so you got like it went to number seven out of 100. It's he's different. Game. He's different from a Drake. He's different. You know, at the end of the day, Drake is Drake, but he has a big entity. J. Cole doesn't have that entity or people yeah. of, uh, behind him like but Drake. I feel like he's been pretty consistent. I and feel like Drake is like. Still, like, I don't think, yeah, I think he's been so big. Me, he can make anything, and, so, yes, and, and that's, it's going to be a hit. Same like for Chris Brown, you know. Right. But Chris yeah. is. Well, just, Cole has worked himself in that space. But I'm saying, like, I think he's been I very consistent. I think he will be able to stay relevant. Not saying Drake won't, right. but as far as growing as an artist, oh, yeah. yeah. I disagree. I see. Yeah. I disagree only because I feel like Cole has worked himself into a space where he can drop any. Like I said, he's dropped the interlude and it went to but seven. But I mean, I think it's, and still, I, it's still good. No, yeah, it's still good. I'm just saying yeah, interludes yeah. don't. I'm saying, I'm saying interludes don't go to seven on the charts. Only yeah. for a guy like Cole or Kendrick could do yeah. that. As far as consistency, sure. as far as consistency, Cole has done a lot of things where he's kind of removed himself, and you've gone, we've gone years without hearing from him. And yeah. lately, he's been like, you know what? I'm getting. He's 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 at a place where he's like, I'm done with this whole thing. So because I'm done, I feel like his music will stay. Right yeah, there. I know. But yeah. he's, I'm saying like he's so, he's come to a place. He's like, you know what? I'm about to be done. So I got to be more present. And like since 2018, he's been you know featuring. Uh, mm -hmm. He did the whole yeah. rap, the whole Dreamville thing. Where hey, every rapper come down, we gonna rap. Yeah, he, he did features though. on this joint. You know, uh, like he's yeah, really yeah. gearing up to like, hey, like I'm gonna vacate this thing. But before I go, I want to make sure I do this. I want to do that. And be more present. Yeah, everything. That's why so, I always respect you know, him. Yeah. It's, always, it's always strategic with him, even to the off season. He's to gonna give us all, one more hour. All, yeah. yeah, all the optics, man. So much respect to Dreamville. So lastly, guys, to finish it up, would you rather? Would you rather forget who you were, or forget whoever, forget who everyone else is or was? Mm -hmm. Per se. That's, that's tough. That's so that's forget who you are, or forget <laughs> who everyone else is. Dang. Oh man. Uh, I'ma say. Y'all go first. Uh, I'ma say. <laughs> I'm gonna say I'm gonna say forget. Like forget who I am? The only reason I'm gonna say forget who um who I was. The only reason I would say forget who I was is only because the foundation of people I have around me will remind me. I feel like Dang, I have a strong I have a stronger I have the strongest foundation in my life with the people I hang around that they'll they they'll I'll snap into it of who I am and I can build off of my character based off of how they see me and how they perceive me. And that's just really family, very close family friends. Mm -hmm. Of course, you and everybody else. That's that's you feel me? And, and that's how I feel because you wouldn't allow me to be like, you know, if uh, just snap out of my league. You would, you would make me understand who I was, you know. So I, I would say I forget who I was because the people around me gonna make me. Uh, he gonna be trying, trying to figure out why he can't go out with it. Like, no, because that's your kid. Are you sure? Right. Yes, See, that's your kid. Yeah. You have to stay here yeah. and take care of that. Exactly. His so. name is Kyrie. You know you can't leave with us. So I would definitely say that. I think if it was a couple of years ago, I think if I was still in college, I feel like if I lost my memory, people would try to remake me. Because around that time, everyone wanted me to drink and smoke and do all the other stuff. And I think that would have been people would have wanted to see that. I hate to say it, but I think people would have wanted to see that real quick. But now I think at this point, if I did that, yeah, you know, people would would hold me down and be like, nah, that's not really for you. Yeah, that's true too. Yeah, that's true too. Um, But I'm going to play devil's advocate. I'm not saying this is my official answer because I don't know, but I'm going to play devil's advocate. I would rather um forget, what was it? You said you'd rather forget who you are. I would rather forget who everyone else is. Okay. Um, it's just because, you know, who you are is important. Like I just said, like I don't want anyone to play with my character mm -hmm. and, you know, and to, and to lose who I am would be detrimental to, you know, what I want to accomplish and things I put in life and, you know, 
Yeah, it was such to forget who everyone else is, like to forget who you are, who you are, and my, my father and my mother. Um, that would suck. But like, um, I, like you said, I think people would try to, you know, try to remind right. me of who they are, who they are. So, but it's still dangerous because you know people can paint themselves exactly. to be whoever they want, yeah, whoever yeah. they want you to think they are. True, true. At that moment in time, both sides. Right. Yeah, so, but I'm gonna play it up. I'm gonna go out of it to get away one of those because I can remain myself. This one is tough. Think? This is tough. Um. I mean, that's a family. You know, you can never, I mean, obviously, if I forget who everybody else is, I can forget my family, but I feel like it'd be easier to, like, I mean, uh, yeah, and I feel like it'd be a, and not that I want to, but it would be an interesting way to get to know myself mm -hmm. all over again, too, just realizing, okay, these are the kind of people I had around me, mm -hmm. you know, are y'all cool, y'all not cool? <laughs> right. I don't know, like, I mean, I think if I forgot who I was, though, like, it's like, I don't know, I feel like you forget what you do when you wake up in the morning, like, yeah. okay, I'll, I'll what was my routine? What what would Ayana do? You know what I'm saying? Right. So And you can't expect everyone to like remind you of everything of that's who right. you are. Too. Yeah. Because then you have people trying to tell you, oh like, oh you did this when you was a kid. Yeah. You went to school for this. Like Well someone like, might like, you know, someone might forget your allergies. And you might I, eat chocolate. I'm saying, like, I have bad allergies. <laughs> like I hate that. Like, someone no. might forget your allergies. <laughs> no, but like, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I don't have any, but other people eat. You might, you might be trying to eat chocolate bad. one day and someone forget to say, oh, wait, you can't have that. You're going to clog your throat up. Hey, yeah. now they got that up. Yeah. Dang, man. Yeah. And another main reason for me, like you said, is my son. So for sure, he will definitely remind me instantly. Oh, yeah. So that's why I said I would rather choose um, forget who I was. I definitely I definitely would take that sacrifice because I would feel, I would feel weird, you know, honestly, just probably knowing that this is my people this day and I just don't remember nothing. Mm -hmm. That that just give me crazy. That give me like, I don't know, like cringe like fifty first dates. Like that that movie oh, give me anxiety. Yeah. Like, like I don't I don't think I've seen that. I've you seen never seen fifty first dates, but I don't really I don't watch it. Like it's good. Yeah. It's just like she I feel like Drew Barry Drew Barry over and over again to me. Like correct. He tried to tell us Drew Barry was like one of the hottest women ever. And I'm like, eh. Well, okay, in her time. At the time maybe, yeah. She was she was kind of but now, <laughs> I just seen the French reunion train. Jennifer Aniston still looks great. The rest of them look old as out of the movie. Jennifer Aniston, she yeah, is. she's one of the ones. Time I was she is. Mid, but you know, yeah, nah, she's a, she's a very pretty. <laughs> she looks better than her very <laughs> more to me, to me personally. They're pretty types of white women. Nah, I guess. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, man, I'm gonna go with uh, forget everybody else. Oh, cool. So we're gonna figure it out. Another amazing episode, amazing episode, man. We had a very special guest, man. We had a good conversation. Do you want to plug yourself? You, and the course. things you got going on? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I DJ. I have mixes on SoundCloud. I mean, are you able to put my name? Oh, yeah. Of course. I'll put everything my, below. My at name here, wherever <laughs> you guys put it. Um, it's Stapleton underscore on Instagram and SoundCloud, so... Okay, yeah. that's a bug. Definitely gonna plug it in. Make sure you send me that information. I got you. And we're gonna get right to it, man. Hey, every Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern time, we had an amazing podcast, amazing show. Make sure you go follow, like, and subscribe at the Phase on View podcast if you haven't done so already, man. Much love, peace, man. Much love.